Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and I am so pleased that I have finally been able to get this amazing, amazing woman on the show who I have had a long, long, long relationship with. Jack Canfield was quoted saying, she's one of the best interviewers on the planet. Her name is Raven Blair Glover a.k.a. the talk show Maven. Her radio journey began at age 55 in the ICU while being by her mom's bedside. Since then, she's gone on to become a five-time award-winning host, founder of Raven International Broadcasting Network, owner of the new Beyond the Interview Agency, and recipient of Barack Obama's 2016 President's Lifetime Achievement Award. Raven's passion is teaching others how to become the Oprah in their niche with their own podcast or TV show. And I have had the honor and the pleasure of being in her orbit for a long time now, at least seven or eight years now. And every time I'm near her, I'm inspired by her enthusiasm for interviewing, her enthusiasm for the industry, and her enthusiasm for helping new influencers to get their feet under them so that they can actually fly. Raven, thank you so much for being a pioneer in this industry and for being willing to give us some time uh, out of your very busy day. Welcome to the show. Oh my goodness. I feel like a little kid just bouncing up and down. Being on your show, being with the amazing Embro. And yes, we've known each other, I think, pretty close to a decade, huh? Very close to a decade. A long time. Yeah, I remember you, and I was talking to you about podcasts. As a matter of fact, you know, you were going to take the Kitchen Table Radio course. I ran across, I actually ran across our conversation on my hard drive. And uh, you and I decided to collaborate and just kind of help each other. I think that's how we ended it. We was like, oh, you know, both of us was like just saying, ah, the cell isn't as more important as the connection. Do you remember that? I and do remember that. that. We would share your expertise and my expertise, and we were just going to collaborate. That is so amazing, yeah. Uh, well, and, it, and that was at a time in my life where I was really struggling. And so I just, I want to I wanna start by saying you are so much a leader and have been for so long and you hold your own calling in a very powerful way. I, I really want to acknowledge that you've been a pioneer, that you have been a pioneer for women, that you've been a pioneer in the, in the broadcast industry, that you have been brave and courageous and bold and amazing and so willing to be so fully yourself. And I'd love to have you talk a little bit to our listeners about, you know, how did you become the raven that you are today. Can you give us just a little bit of the backstory on that? Yeah, and I'll keep it short. And you know, as talk show folks, we can go. So I want you to relax and I will keep it short. Thank you for bringing that up because a lot of times people look at you and I and other influences and they're like, I can't do this because they're here. They, you know, and they don't know the story. So I always think the backstory is important, but I will keep it short. You know, as a kid, I felt like Casper. You've heard me talk about that before. I felt dismissed, uh, felt undervalued, and just had no self-worth at all. And But the one thing that used to really just get me excited was being able to go to WJMO radio station in Cleveland, Ohio. And I would sneak there 
and I would feel so good. I felt like I belonged. And I even, you know, was a junior DJ for a short time there. But then like most of us, you know, as I grew older and I found out we had to take an FCC license test. And back then there wasn't a whole lot of black people on the radio. It certainly wasn't a whole lot of women. So I had kind of like two things against me. Plus I hated tests and tests would just freeze me. Okay. So I gave up on that dream, but I tell people, Emerald, my dream found me at the ICU unit of the hospital, like you were saying, 55 years old. And while I was in a chapel praying, wondering if mom was going to make it, you know, God spoke to me and he said, look, you know, your mom's going to be fine. But Raven, she spent all the good money to make sure you were in the suburbs, went to the best schools, they had chain of restaurants. And here you're at 55 making $10 an hour, 20 hours a week. How are you going to help your mom? You can't even help yourself. And the instructions was you got to step up, show up, and grow up. Step up and be the daughter that they raised and to be the woman that could take care of herself and not live off of $10 an hour. Show up. Hey, you wasted a lot of time. You're 55 years old. So you can't drag your feet. You got to show up in a big way. And grow up is, that's what I tell people, you know, I had to do like Michael Jackson used to say and take a good look at the woman in the mirror and ask myself, why am I settling? Why am I not doing more? I had everything in my past that said, you should be successful at 55. And then that's when I heard Alex Mendoza. And when I left the chapel, I got on a conference call because I bought his course, Teleseminar Secrets. And he said, the quickest way to become an expert is to interview experts. And right there at the hospital while mom slept, I'd be in a waiting room and I just took a piece of paper, drew down the line. What do I need to do? Where do I need to begin? And I ran around the hospital and said, I'm going to start a show. I'm going to start a show. And they said, you're here. You live here pretty much in the waiting room while your mom is going through this. When the um, heads of the hospital leave, you can go in the little room behind the desk and you can stay on that computer. And I Googled how to start a podcast, how to interview you know, all that stuff. And that was February 6, 2006. April 23rd, 2006, I launched my first show from the kitchen table. Yeah, beautiful. What an amazing story. So one of the things I like to ask my Wickedly Smart Women is about valuing your vision. And Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing in that story is you actually had that vision a long, long, long time ago, but it wasn't until you made that direct connection with your own source of inspiration, God or spirit Mm -hmm. or creator, whatever you want to call it, that all of a sudden something clicked in for you and you made, you made the decision to value your vision. So I'd love to have you share with our listeners, particularly any listeners who might have the same vision that you had, right? Mm -hmm. Who might want to step into the role of getting behind the microphone, becoming an expert by interviewing experts. What can you say to them about your own, like what did you have to pull up out of yourself to Mm -hmm. not only value the vision, but to continue to invest, to continue to value the vision, to continue to grow into the vision, both personally as well as professionally, investing time, energy, attention, money. What can you say to these women? I can say you have to make the decision, first of all, that it's your time to shine. And you got to put all the things that you didn't do, all the butts out of the way. And just like the instructions was for me, step up, show up, and grow up. And the grow up was the ouch, Emerald. The grow up was, because it's hard to face what you've done right, but you also got to look at what have you missed. I don't like to say did wrong, but what could you have done better? And you have to invest. I had to invest. At that time, I didn't have, but... 40, 50, under $100. So I had to buy, first of all, I invested in the free stuff like most of us and it's okay because you got to start somewhere. And then I moved to buying books and then I moved to investing in, in audio series. Then I moved to investing in courses that was $100. But in order for me to change, what's that old saying? For things to change, I must change. And I had to change. 
I had to say my mother was the matriarch of the family. She wasn't just a mom. She was a, the matriarch of the family. She was the glue that kept the family together. She was very harsh and, and you know, very strict. And that was a lot of the problems that I had growing up and not, you know, feeling valued. But I knew that she did the best she could. And we're all a product of our product. You know what I'm saying? So I had to let go of pain and hurt that I felt from her and neglect. And I had to say, this is my mom and she needs me. And like the instruction said, I need to step up, show up and grow up. So I would say, invest in yourself at whatever level you can invest in yourself. At. Find somebody that's speaking your language. And when Alex says the quickest way to become an expert was to interview experts, I held on to that. Because the little raven that snuck to the radio station stepped out when he said, there's this thing called podcast and you don't need an FCC license. And, you know, you can become an expert by interviewing other experts. And I was like, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. And that's why I ran around the hospital and I was so excited about it. So another thing is, do you. Stop doing everybody else. Stop doing what your husband said, your wife said, your kids said, your mama said, your daddy said. Do you. I'm really big on being free to be you. And it doesn't matter who likes it. If you're not hurting someone, this is your life. And there's no do-overs. This is it, you know. So you got to, the do-over time is run out, you know, especially when you're 55 and older. You know, you got to start thinking about you. What have you put off all your life? I, I think I heard um, Les Brown say when I was at the hospital, I've heard him say it before, but that it stuck with me when I was on a conference call of his when he said that the richest place is the graveyard because people take their dreams and their visions and everything they want, their gifts, they hold on to it and they never unleash it to the world. Well, first of all, Emerald, that's selfish, okay? And I had to look at that. It is selfish not to unleash your gift in the world. Because like you said, God, your creator, somehow you got that gift, okay? And it's not for you. It's for you to pass it on. The good, the bad, the ugly of all our lessons is to be passed on. Our gifts is to be passed on. We're not supposed to take it to the grave. He didn't give us life to carry that to the grave. That's why we're all different. That's why we're all unique. That's why you may be great. Emerald may be great at one thing. I may be great at the other. You may be great, speaking to your listeners and viewers, at something else. So tap into what makes you excited and gets mm. you going and, and just go for it. Don't look back. I love Give it. Give permission to succeed. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so many pearls of wisdom in that little section right there. We, <laughs> we could wallpaper the wall with the pearls of wisdom there, Raven. Thank you so much. We are already at the break. It's amazing how quickly that comes. But right now, I want to thank all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We are welcoming thousands of downloads from all over the world. We are now being listened to in 39 countries the last time I checked. And today I want to shout out to our listeners in Slovenia and South Africa. Thank you so much for tuning in. I also want to let everyone know that I have some new things coming down the pike in terms of uh, ways that you can tap into your wisdom and turn it into wealth. And I would love to invite you to take my wealth readiness quiz, which you can find at quiz.wealthylifementor.com to see how ready you are for creating a wealthy life, which is a work of art. We will be right back with Raven Davis. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by The Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, The Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition 
Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your wealthy life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. All right, we are back with Raven Blair Glover, and I want to let you know where you can find out more about her. Before we went to the break, we had a long conversation about how you might be somebody who is ready to become an expert yourself by interviewing experts. And there is no one better, in my opinion, to lead you down that path than Raven. I mean, she, as Jack Canfield was quoted as saying, is one of the best interviewers on the planet. One thing that we didn't dive into is how many amazing celebrities Raven has interviewed. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we move forward here in the interview, but I want to let you know where you can find out more about her and access her amazing wisdom and invest in yourself, sometimes with time, sometimes with time, energy, and attention, and money to move yourself along and say yes to what is rising up in your spirit if you are meant to become a profitable podcaster. So you can find out more about Raven and what she's got going on at the Profitable Podcaster Academy.com. We will have that for you in the show notes. So, Raven, before we dive back in, I do want to talk a little bit about kind of the businessy side of things about the Profitable yeah. Podcaster Academy. Can you, first of all, tell us a little bit about some of the people that you've actually interviewed and some of the ways that you have become profitable yourself and helped others to become profitable through the work that you do with them? Okay, I'd love to. And I really get excited about this, Emerald, because the first thing most people say is, I can't reach out to them because I just started my podcast. Or, you know, I don't have 10,000 downloads each week and all that stuff. And I want to start by saying, please let that go, because that is not true. Beautiful Jane Kennedy. She's, uh, I don't know if you know Jane Kennedy, but she was like back then, she was the Halle Berry of the day for, for Black women. She had won a beauty contest. She was a sports announcer and just gorgeous. And Jane and I are good friends today. And she didn't know me. I didn't know her. But I made my dream list at the hospital when I was Googling how to interview and stuff like that. And what I found best was to share my story because people are inspired by your story, by your journey. But you have to do it in a quick way, like I teach in my Icon interview formula. I investigate who you want to interview, find out more about them so you'll know how to approach them. See, this will help you connect with them in a really good way or connect with their media person. And then, oh, you got to own your platform, own who you are, own your story, own your mission, own your purpose, and and get to the nitty gritty. So using that formula that I didn't know at the time was a formula, right? But I would just reach out to people that was on my list. So Jane Kennedy, Montel Williams, Fran Drescher, Lindsay Wagner, Chili from TLC, Ernie Hudson. There's so many different people. I can't even think of them. And then I reached out to the icons like Brian Tracy, Dr. J.B. Hill, Napoleon Hill's grandson, Allie Brown, and of course, Les Brown. I was just so, uh, Brendan Bouchard. I was new. And so I didn't have the fears that as you get older and doing things, you start thinking about the numbers. But when you're new, and I'm designing this thing from the hospital. I was just thinking about reaching out, Cynthia Kersey, all these people that I wanted to interview. And so at that time, the secret was big. And because I think the secret came out in 2004, and this was 2006 when my journey began. And so I reached out to everybody that was in the secret, and 80% of them I got, I got my nose too. But I stopped focusing on the nose, and I just focused on the yeses. So the no's would make me mad. And I used to learn in the sales because I come from the sales background that, you know, you don't get mad, you get into action. 
And the more you get into action, the more they say no, the more you push forward. The more they say no, the more you push forward. And so I kept pushing forward, pushing past those no's. And then once you get that yes, the secret is don't get up, don't take a golf coffee break, don't go to the restroom. You get another one and another one. You see what I'm saying? So most people, we get that yes, then we're like, okay, I can go play, I can go have a steak. But that's when you're hot. <laughs> so why would you do that? <laughs> And I got that. And so those are just some of the people. I mean, it's been since 2006, since I launched my show. We're in 2020, but it's a lot. I think actually celebrity celebrities, because I'm thinking about editing and having my daughter edit them and do a product and turn it into a membership. It's about 30, 33, I think we said in general, when you talk about real celebrities. Beautiful. I love it. So what I really want to underscore for the listeners there is a couple of things. First of all, I want to underscore that every no becomes an invitation to stay in action and keep put moving forward. Mm-hmm. And every yes is also an invitation to stay in action and keep moving forward rather than suddenly deciding, oh, I got a yes, it's time to take a break. So that, that was beautiful. The other thing that I want to underscore there is that you were in a place where you were in beginner's mind. And so you just said, you know, you just went for it. You are, as as I said at the beginning, very bold, very brave, very willing to put yourself out there. And so it's really important for the listeners to just remember if you are called just keep answering the call, right? Keep answering yeah, the call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing I want to underscore is, is your system. Like her, she's a very clear system that she has created that she can actually transfer to you and help you to use as a framework if you're ready to get started. And that is her icon system. So investigate, mm-hmm. connect, own your own power, own your own greatness, own your own gifts, own your own vision, own your own contribution that you're here to make, which is that's mm-hmm. the, the most powerful, the always oh, the most powerful part of the system, in my, my uh, opinion. Own your platform is the biggie, Emerald, because mm-hmm. most people, one of the things I never did is that I have a podcast, I have a internet radio show. I always said, I have a show you know, or Mm -hmm. I have a radio show or I have a TV show, even with my streaming TV. Mm -hmm. I never say streaming TV. I say TV. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, podcasts, it's a good thing. So you can say, I have a podcast. Mm -hmm. But back then, most people didn't even know what the heck a podcast was. So I was just owning the fact that I have a show. I'm Mm -hmm. like Oprah. I have a show. I'm like Larry King. I have a show. Mm -hmm. And my show empowers women you know, to go for their dreams no matter what. And, you know, Jane, I love the fact that you always was a woman pioneer, a woman leader, the first black woman that did this. And I know my listeners would just love, love, love to hear from someone that's so empowering, so amazing. And the show is Amazing Women of Power, Jane. And I couldn't think of anyone better than to ask, have you to come on. Here's the thing. Would you be open to come on the show and sharing some of your insights, some of your expertise, you know, some of your wisdom and your successes and your failures and your challenges with the audience of baby boomer women just like me who want more out of life and are determined to get it. Mm. Beautiful. I love it. I hope you all listen to that on repeat because what Raven just did was she gave you a sales conversation to have, an enrollment conversation to have with your potential guests. So that was massively, massively valuable right there. Raven, thank you so much for giving us that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you now about, and so that was the nitty gritty uh, in your icon thing. (laughs) Like literally that's the nitty gritty right there is the like get down to business. The nitty gritty Mm -hmm. is getting down to business. And make it about them and not you. Yeah. And this mm-hmm. owning of your platform is really about stepping into sovereignty and really owning what it is. So I, we only have a couple of minutes left. Okay. One thing that came to me when you were talking before the break is you said something about what you've done right. Mm-hmm. So if you could leave our listeners with 
either a practice that you might do or something that you might teach to help your clients focus on what they've done right or something that you do in your own life, maybe every day to just keep the courage muscle strong. Can you talk about really honoring what you've done right? Thank you for saying that. It took me a while to do that. One of the things you're excellent at, uh, Emerald, is celebrating and having others help you celebrate your successes. And you do it whether they're small successes or big successes. I've seen you say, help me celebrate that I'm, ha- I'm going to paint today. <laughs> you, know? you know, so uh, to the big stuff, help me celebrate. I'm going to be an icon again on Steve's stage. You know, I had to grow into that. And it took a while because remember, I'm this damaged, emotionally damaged kid, you know, so no matter how good you are, sometimes your pain sticks with you a lot. And all we do is we cover it with our education and stuff, but it's still there, right? Mm -hmm. So let me try to hurry and say this, but this, I think this is important to leave your listeners with. I received an email when I was in Hawaii back in 2016 saying, you have been nominated for the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And I ignored it. I thought it was a joke. I was like, no way. This is a joke. Somebody's scamming me. I put it on for three weeks. And then it got down to President Obama was going to be leaving office in a couple of weeks. And remember, I was only nominated. I hadn't been chosen. They say, look, if you just send us an email saying you accept the nomination or you don't. And my son said, mom, I think this is real. I looked on there, they had a phone number, I called, I found it was real. But here's the thing, until I walked across that stage and got the presidential pin and the award, I never owned that. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting teary-eyed thinking about it because remember I talked earlier, there's sometimes there's no Mm do-overs. And I never, I went on Facebook Live one time I never celebrated the biggest moment in my life. Mm. I missed it. And sometimes today I have to play that tape and see when I'm down and see me walking across the stage and them saying, you know, on behalf, what was he, the 43rd president or whatever, you know, thank you for your service. It was the biggest moment. And that moment will never come again. And I missed it. So I encourage your listeners, please do like Emerald. Celebrate your your lows, your highs. Celebrate the fact that you did it. And I think of nothing else from this coronavirus and all the stuff that's going on in the world. Life has become more precious to all of us. Mm -hmm. So now I wake up, I celebrate the day. Mm -hmm. I celebrate the air I breathe. I celebrate the moment. And I teach my clients and my my hosts and the people in my business academy to celebrate everything. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Because as long as we can get up and breathe and walk and talk, we have another opportunity. Mm. And don't ever give up on your dreams. I love you so much. Thank you so much, Raven. That was stellar. (laughs) Phenomenal. Thank you so much. And let us celebrate. We're going to give five (laughs) claps to Raven for getting the Presidential Achievement Award from our amazing real last president <laughs> listeners. We do love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's show or send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thank you for tuning in. Keep your ears open and remember you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.